So today I'm going to go down a go over a simple tear down and internal cleaning of a Sanyo PLC XE40 projector. It's not hugely complicated or difficult, but it should hopefully improve the image quality and maybe get a bit more life out of it. So first step is you've got some screws around the outside. So we have one here. I've got myself a little organizer. I picked it up for I think a pound. That way I can keep all the screws together, but more importantly I can separate them so I can have all of the exterior screws together, then interior screws of one type together, interior screws of screws of another type together. That way it makes it a bit easier to remember where they've gone or where they've come from. So you've got seven screws on the outside, got two on the left, two on the right, you've got two on what is the side where a bracket would go so it could be hung on an overhead projector and you've also got one on the back as well. So I've already unscrewed some of these and fortunately sometimes they don't like to come out of place easily. I've got a magnetic headed screwdriver as well. So I've taken all the screws out of the outside, so now the next step is to take the top casing off. So if this is the first time that the casing has been taken off of one of these, you want to just be a bit careful, uh, bit by bit, all around the outside. Be careful when taking it off as there is a lead connected on the inside. So there's a lead just there that is connected to the infrared receiver for the remote control. So as we can see there's quite a bit of dust in this unit. So what I've got is I've got some Press there, spray doctor. I've also got some camera cleaning tools. So I've got a little handheld air blower, got a nice soft brush. I've also got some lens cleaning fluid and some soft cloth as well. So normally my first step is I'll give just the general kind of top of the board blow with the compressed air. The next step is to disconnect all of the jumper leads. So you've got one. two actually for the fans on the side of the unit and the fans actually slide out which makes it easier to clean those out so what we can do is just use some compressed air
you can make it a bit easier on yourself at times by just getting your soft brush and brushing before blowing that can help to kick up any loose or any stubborn dirt, dust or dirt and let's just blow some more out of the area near where the fans are, near where the build is so then carry on to disconnect the jumper leads be careful some of them as or be careful all of them actually as jumper leads aren't great as far as being connected and disconnected a lot goes their mating their mating cycles as it were quite limited so you've also got this black cover here just over the bulb housing it can be easier to take that off at times before disconnecting too many jumpers. Once again I'm putting these screws into a different compartment of my screw organizer and that just pulls out like that. So you've got a couple of jumpers here and a couple of jumper leads here as well. Now the really good thing about the design of this board and the jumper leads is that pretty sure they're all a different size to each other. That means that you're not going to run into issues of not knowing where a certain jumper lead goes. So if it won't fit, then it doesn't belong there. As simple as that. So that's all of the jumper leads disconnected, but there is a ground wire just there so you have to unscrew that so that should in theory prevent any surges from happening I have to be careful with this one because it can be quite tight and you might want to push down on the board slightly so that when you're unscrewing it, you don't twist the board, bend it, and cause any damage. Now that's jumpers disconnected everywhere or around the sides. You've also got these three ribbon cables on the top. They are kept in by black retention clamps. So you may not be able to see too clearly, but just on the sides. So if you just pull those ribbon should just pop out simple as that now the first time I did this there was no I had to do a bit of research to find that out as although you can get hold of the service manual for this projector there was no mention of that whatsoever the next step is just to go around the board and unscrew it. Really simple. Once again, I'd recommend using a magnetic, no, magnetic tipped screwdriver for this. Because some of these screws are very small and quite fiddly and you don't want to go losing any of them Let's see how I can get this one out this one's been a bit stubborn there we go tools that you might need for this is a screwdriver, some needle nose pliers, I need needle nose pliers so that later on so that later on when you're reconnecting 
the ribbon cables, you can pull them through the slot on the board easily because otherwise it's a bit of a faff. So you will need some compressed air. Already kind of gone over what that's for. The other thing the other thing you'll need or want ideally are some latex gloves. Or just some you don't want kind of gloves that are made out of wool or anything like that because that will leave items or bits of kind of fluff and such lying around. So some latex gloves, really good thing to have on hand. And they're quite cheap to get hold of as well. So, in theory, that is the board and screwed. Yeah. So there we go. That is the board for the projector off. And there's a bit of dust on the bottom. So, we can get our compressed air. parts of it or the areas you've got this section which is where the power supply comes into you've also got here which is where the bulb is housed you've got a bit of a fan here and then here you've got the optical chamber which is where the light from the bulb comes in to split into red green and blue and then combined in an LCD prism which we'll see in a minute, that is then shot out down the lens system. So today I'm only going to cover cleaning out the optical chamber, so nothing too complicated or difficult. <coughs> you can take out the lens as well, I have done that on others, just give the lens a bit of a clean and the dust off, but normally it's not hugely necessary. So let's start by cleaning out all of this dust. Let's start with the fan, the power supply system. So that's I would say most of the dust blown off of the inside. So let's get to cleaning the optical chamber. And let's just take this cover off of the ribbons. And a couple of things that I've seen that can be different between these or between each projector is some of them might have this little cover for the ribbons, some might not. I've also seen ones where there's a couple of extra screws. I'm going to peel that off. There's a couple of extra screws here and here to keep the whole housing down. But on others, I haven't seen it. It's a bit of potluck, I suppose it depends on who made it, where which factory it was made in, how they were feeling that day, could have been anything. Once again I'm placing these screws into a different compartment with my organiser. These screws are different to the ones that we've just taken off of the board. 
difference with the, those four screws. Simply lift this housing off. Now be careful as there are some lenses there. So as you can see, hopefully, there are some lenses there, which we'll get around to cleaning in a moment. First of all, I just want to show you the optical chamber. So you may not be able to see too well, but here, light comes in, it's one of these diachronic mirrors, or diachronic lenses, that then splits the light. So here, yellow goes that way, blue carries on, and here it's split again. So, and then goes through lens, off this mirror, off that mirror, into there, and then it all goes into this chamber here, it's combined, then goes out of the lens. So you can see there's quite a bit of dust on those lenses, those mirrors. So let's try and get that off. So this is the point where we want to put on those latex gloves I mentioned earlier. Because you don't want to be introducing any oils from your fingers onto the mirrors or the lenses. That's just going to make it worse. As dust will stick to those oils a lot. So what I've also got as well is some lens cleaning fluid, meant for cameras, but does do a good job on lenses and mirrors. I've also got a soft cloth as well that I can use. So before we take any of them out, remember to kind of, or remember how they're sat at the moment. So remember which way the lenses are in, which way the mirrors are in. Just because you don't want to take a lens or something out, put it in the wrong way, and then realise once you've turned the projector on, put it all back together, that your image is upside down because of something you did, and it could be a absolute nightmare to figure out which one you've put in the wrong way around. So what I'm going to do is just going to put some of this lens cleaning fluid onto my chamois cloth. So if you haven't got any lens cleaning fluid, you could use grass cleaner, mirror cleaner that you could get from supermarket or shops, anything like that. And also remember when you the mirrors are held in by little clips. I only let you put it in a certain way just to make sure don't if it's not going in don't force it in it should go in quite smoothly I'm going to do quickly though just blow out some of this excess dust just so it doesn't rear its ugly head later on and kind of undo any work we've already done that's so already I might have to Redo that mirror because it's already gotten some dust on it from when I just blew some out. So, what you want to check for when you're cleaning mirrors, as you want to check when you're cleaning any mirror, whether it be in your home or a device, are streaks. Try to make sure there aren't any streaks on any of the mirrors or lenses. So the lenses and it's got quite a large dust build up on it there we go and it just slots back in So this is this part's a bit different. This here, there you go. This is a diacroic, I believe. 
lens or direct filter. Now you've got serial number on, so if you needed to find a part for it, which you may be able to do, you may not. I've tried, I actually contacted Panasonic directly who bought out Sanyo and they told me they couldn't sell me any parts but you might be able to find some somewhere you can at least look and you can quote the serial number of the part which might give someone a better idea of which part it is that you're after now the reason why you might be doing this in the first place is one of many things actually I'll just go over a few a few kind of tips that I've found to try and help with them so the reason why I'm doing this is because where I am at the moment the site has roughly 25 of these projectors and these projectors are 8 years old now so they are nowhere near new and they're starting to get coloration on the projected image. So what I mean by that is there'll be a pink, a yellow kind of tinge to the image. Uh, as I'm sure you can understand, that makes using them quite a pain. No one wants to be using a projector where they can't make out just what it is that they're looking at. So, after some research and some digging, and asking other people that had that have had these projectors, they seem to be of the opinion that the coloration problem is caused by burning or dust build up on the lenses, mirrors, filters caused by the bulb having been left in for too long. I didn't know this when I started cleaning these projectors, but and when a bulb's lifespan, or when a bulb has been used for a long period of time, the UV output can grow. So just going to use it compressed air at this point, just blowing the dust out of the coloration can be because of dust build up on dichroic mirrors or lenses the filters just burning as well and that can be caused by the bulb outputting more UV light than it used to if the bulb has been left in for several thousand hours the UV output can be quite high and it will burn everything along its path and that's where a lot of these problems are coming in now most places would just say cool we'll get rid of them but this site unfortunately can't do that just at the moment so we're trying to get a bit more life out of these if we can so yeah that's the reason for me cleaning this one out so you've done so you've done the parts that you want to so the one part that we do need to clean though, that is this section. So this has got some lenses and such that we need to clean and dust off. So I'll use the compressed air first. Then I'll use my 
Kopf. I would also say is be extremely delicate when you're cleaning these components as as the cost to replace will be very high. Now we can place this back on top. So let's do that by doing the reverse of what we did before. Sits on there, make sure the ribbon cables are out of the way. And we simply reverse the process we did to disassemble it. So we take the screws that we took out and we put them back in. Now this is just a very simple cleaning of the inside. You could do a far more thorough job. You could disassemble the whole disassemble the whole unit and do it that way, part by part, piece by piece. That would take you an awfully long time, but it would ensure that every single component has been cleaned, it's free of dust, and your projector is basically like it was when it came out of the factory. I've had a few other kind of unusual problems with these. One that has happened before is when you turn it on, it will seem like it's fine for maybe 15, 30 seconds. It will go through its usual process of starting up. It will sh even show the Sanyo startup screen and the timer. But then it will inexplicably turn itself off. Now you might initially think, great, that's the board gone, or it's a very severe problem. It could actually be very simple. What I found it to be most of the time, if it does that, is the bulb. I found that with the types of bulbs that this this projector uses sometimes as they heat up two filaments separate if they do this the lamp will shut off and the projector will then power down as a safety feature so that no damage is caused might be easier at this point as well just to take the gloves off because you'll be screwing things in and you'll be able to kind of feel the screws a bit better what I'd like to do though is put the jumpers jump cables in first I find it's easier to do it that way so just quickly the new nose pliers I mentioned earlier is for getting the ribbon cables back out so, if we do that, it means that also, A, you're not touching them, getting any kind of oils and such from your fingers on them. As mentioned, jumpers, if they don't fit, then they don't belong there. But if it helps, Maybe take a picture as you're disassembling. So this one, for example, won't fit in the top. So it must go in the bottom. It's being a bit fiddly.
Uh, before any of you kind of start going, oh, he's done this one, he's done that one. No, I'm not a AV kind of hardware service servicing technician. I my process for learning this was look on forums, see if anyone else has done it before, videos, look at the service manuals and any kind of manuals that other people have put together around it and try and replicate it. So it might be easier to put the ribbon cables back in now. So as for you've got this black retention clip, so make sure that's all the way out. Slide the ribbon cable in. Once it's all the way in you shouldn't be able to see the lighter gold coloration. Once it's in, just close the black retention clips down. Make sure they're all the way done up. If they're not done up all the way, and I have had this recently, and I moved another projector. And sorry guys, I had to off and do something for a minute there. Um, but yeah, so... Let's just put the ribbon cables back in. So that one's in. Close the retention clamps. Yeah, so as I was saying, I had an issue whereby the projector, when I turned it on, was only projecting a white image. It wasn't showing any of the menus or anything like that. Just a solid white image. Now, I thought that it was going to be something major, something on the board had blown, something like that, which I was dreading because it was working that morning. It's a bit like crap what's gone on between then and now. I had a look on some forums, wasn't much on there about that particular issue. And what we'll do quickly is we'll put the little cover, that black cover that was over the bulb housing, back first. Yeah, so wasn't much help on the internet. So I thought, well, I've already opened it up, what's the harm in opening it up again? So I did. I found that the three ribbon cables had come out of the retention clamps. Obviously I hadn't quite done them up tight enough, or they'd come done in transit. There's, there's no real degree of tightness, it's just they're on or they're not. So they've come and done in transit, and that was causing a white image to be displayed. So it connected them and hey presto, it wasn't showing a white image anymore. So if any of you are getting a solid white image, open up your projector and have a look, see if the ribbon cables are connected still. So they might have come loose. The service manual does say, or at least has a service manual has a little troubleshooting section, and one of its things is I'm not getting any image. What could be the problem? And it says check some circuits and search check the optical pathway, blah 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 blah. And you could break out your multimeter and go around testing all of the circuits and the jumpers and things but that would take an age to do for the whole board and I think by the time you figured out that it wasn't any of the circuits you wouldn't ever want to 
we'll have to get another projector again. So this is probably one of the most time consuming parts. Making sure that the board is back on, all the jumpers are in properly. And obviously the most time consuming part is actually cleaning the lenses. As you have to make sure that they are clean. It's your first time cleaning them. Maybe take a bit of extra time, just so you know. Now, one thing you might notice when screwing your board back in is the parts of it will flex. That's fine. Right, it's very rare that you would find it's very rare that you would find a circuit board that doesn't have some degree of flex in it. If you did, then be extremely careful if you're handling it. This one has some flex to it, so that's good means that you're less likely to snap it Just make sure that all the screws are in tight and There we go, that's all my screws done. So, <coughs> what I'd like to do now is just give it another quick blast of air. Might give the fans that are on the side a quick blast of air. As you'll probably notice, the fans on this, they're in opposing directions. So one fan will suck air in, the other will blow it out. So this can be a bit fiddly, putting the fans back in. Because one of the jumpers for the fans is on the underside of the board. So it might be easier just to lift the board slightly and just get it lined up roughly. So may not ever works for you. But either way, maybe a bit of a faff. Can actually be a lot easier to put this jumper in before you've screwed the board down. Because that way you can lift the board up, slot the jumper in. Screw it in. There we go. So that then slots in. There we go. Then we can attach the top jumper, which isn't anywhere near as much of a hassle. do as well is I will clean the top case or top cover of it Need to reconnect the jumper for the infrared receiver. It's really simple. And just push it in like that. Place the case back on top. Let's go 
go round. Just give it a bit of a squeeze on all sides. Since it's been off for a bit, it might not want to sit completely flush again. So what I do as well is grab the lens cleaning fluid from earlier, put some cloth, and then I'll just wipe the lens down as well. That way you not get any dust or anything on there. The next bit is to simply get the exterior screws and screw them all back in. Now that I said about it lining up and not quite wanting to sit right, you have to squeeze it and then put a screw in. So you may not want to tighten them completely. And you might want to do opposing sides as well. So you may not want to do what I'm doing where I'm putting in the two on the right, and then we'll do the one on the back, and then we'll do the two on the left, and then two on the underside. You might want to do as well, just to make it sit a bit better. You might want to do one on the right, one on, the, one, on one side, one on the other side, then one on the back, and then one on the underside, and then do the others. You're not tightening it all on one side completely and then the other, which could be a pain in the faff. I find normally, though, once you've got the side ones in, then everything else is fine. sides on the underside. There we go. Right, one thing to do as well is just take the filters out that are on the top. Just give them a quick blast. Around every inch of this, and uh, for every speck of dust, you might not mind too much about the outside. The next part would be let's just open the bulb housing. Through the bulb, so there's some dust in here as well. And with the way light acts and the way shadows, especially, act, 
is that if you've got some dust very close to the light source, the size of it will be amplified further away. So these poles can be a bit of a pain to get out, be a bit fiddly. This bulb has quite a bit of dust on it. So what we'll do is we'll just blow out the housing, blow out the housing there. We'll say blow the bulb, blow the dust off the bulb. to see it too clearly here but if you look at the bulb so as you may or may not be able to see on this bulb on the lens there's some kind of cloudiness around there and there's some marking and kind of when it kind of hits the light right it looks like parts of it burnt slash a bit mottled <coughs> now this is one of those things that uh, it just happens over time there's not a lot you can do about it um, obviously ways to increase your bulb life are stop using no show that does still kind of cause heat to build up and so it keeps your projector on keeps sucking air and dust builds up so yeah don't use no show if you're not going to use your projector for a while turn it off that is the best course of action really so what I will do is because I happen to have some at the moment I'll place a brand new bulb in here as often as well the older a bulb gets the duller it gets as well that's just how they behave. So I've got a nice bright shiny new bulb that I can place in which should give optimal brightness. And once again these can be a bit of a faff to get in. And you've got to line them up screws and also power connectors as well. Once that's in, just screw it in. Now what we're doing at the moment is keeping any bulbs that are still working but maybe have a thousand plus hours on them. I'm doing this because if any of the bulbs go, like completely go, then we have a few kind of backups. And yes, they're not going to be great, but it's better to have a few kind enough bulbs just in case anything goes wrong. And so, throwing them all away. You need them. Right, let's just grab the screw for that. Screw that back in. There we go. What I'll do now is I'll just give it a quick dust with a bit of compressed air at the label just to make sure. So that is the process of how to clean the inside of Sanyo PLC XC40 projector. Now a couple of notes to keep in mind. 
when doing this, keep your records and such up to date. Make a log of when the jet was serviced. Maybe even kind of what type of servicing, so whether it was just cleaning the filters or cleaning the filters and the inside. Also, with me holding on to old bulbs, what I'm doing as well is making a note. So, if on the boxes when we got them, he wrote down who they were from and when we got them. But so I'll just scratch that out and just put old bulb. And what I'll do is I'll turn the jets on and I'll check the lamp hours, write the lamp hours down for the old bulb, and then I'll reset the lamp hours. And that's it really. So thanks for watching, being interested. I hope this gave you some idea. Um, any questions, send them in. And uh, yeah, I hope this was useful to you. So, cheers guys. So, cheers guys.